Hi everybody, welcome to your geography lesson for the week beginning the 4th of May. Uh, we're continuing with the population topic that we uh, were working on the last few weeks. And if you remember last uh, week's lesson was based around looking at population graphs known as population pyramids uh, and seeing that there is a difference in terms of the numbers of people in different age groups in different types of countries. And you've done a little task where you compared a couple of countries just to prove that there is differences in the number of children and elderly. What we're going to do today is think more about one particular issue in the world, and that's this problem here, um, which is the effects of having an aging population. Now, uh, aging populations are found in a variety of places across the world. And I'm just going to uh, show you where in the world at the moment has uh, the most aging people. So we can see here the top ranked countries in the world. We've got Japan, which has the highest number of people in its population over the age of 60. We can see that there. Um, and we can see that if we look down this list after Japan, all the other countries from Italy there um, down to the Channel Islands at the bottom um, are all European countries. So we have Japan and Asia at the top and the rest are found in Europe. Uh, and, and the first thing I should say about having an age population is that this is generally a thing found in the richest countries in the world, not in the poorest. And we're just going to explore this idea in a little bit more detail later on in the lesson. If we snap that, just to prove that there is a, a kind of a geography to countries that have agents, we can see this map goes in dark blue where the most elderly people are. So areas in dark blue have over 30% of the population over the age of 60. And we can see Portugal and Spain. There's Italy, Greece, Germany, and Finland. And then over here we have uh, Japan. So it's definitely an issue to do with certain parts of the world. Uh, but I've always said it's a problem. And that then raises the next question, which is why is it a problem? Well, let's just take that a little bit of detail. First of all, we have to think about what does an aging population actually look like? And let's have a little look at Japan here, okay? And what we can see that is in 1950 in Japan, uh, most of the people in Japan's population were in this age group. Now, this is the lowest age group. This is the zero to four age group. We can see that by the year 2005, that the biggest age groups were now in this age group. And that actually, the number of people in the younger age groups was relatively small. As a matter of fact, we can see when we look at the top in the older age groups that there's actually a lot more there than there was at the same time back in 1950. So there's very few in 1950 in the older age groups, and that has grown. By the time we get into the future in 2055, so 35 years from now, we can see that Japan's population is what we, we actually call top heavy. It means it's got huge numbers of people in the older age groups and very small amounts in the young age groups. So why is this a problem? Okay, well, let's just explore this in a little bit more detail. Um, this is a little graphic that kind of gives you an idea. I'm just gonna take my face away from the, the lesson and just keep chatting to you. Here in this picture, we have this idea of a set of scales. And on the top, we have elderly people and underneath we have working age people. And actually, when you think about it, underneath working age people, we would actually have yourselves, uh, the young people in the population. And clearly, the young people in a population grow up to become adults. And eventually, the adults grow up to become elderly. Why is it an issue that we have more at the top end of our population, as in more elderly or an aging population, than in the middle, as in adults or children? Well, the problem comes from the fact that Old people generally cost a lot of money for society. And there's a number of reasons why they cost. First of all, they are often no longer working. So they are retired. And when they're retired, they're on a pension. And that pension is paid for by the government. They're also no longer paying taxes because they are no longer working, or they're certainly not paying much in the way of tax anymore. Therefore, they're not really paying in to the government 
quite the opposite. They're taking out because they are taking out pensions. Now, of course, the idea is that they once worked, just like we can see down here. They were working adults and they paid taxes. And then when they got to a certain age, they were able to retire and start getting the money back. But it's not just pensions. Old people tend to then need quite a lot of health care. Um, and they often can, if they're unwell, end up in hospital, which can also further increase the cost of elderly. Elderly people are often found in care homes um, and needing looked after all of the time, certainly as they get into the very old age groups. Once again, that's another cost. Now, that's not a problem. These costs are not a problem as long as you have enough people in the working age to pay the taxes and support those costs. Now you can see the problem here, if you don't have enough people in the middle ages and too many in the older ages, well then who's going to pay for that increased number of elderly? And then you get a real problem, and we're seeing this in Japan and we're seeing this in Italy, where you don't have any children. And that's the real characteristic of an aging population. It's not just about having too many elderly, it's actually about not having enough children. Because if you're not having children anymore, if your fertility rate is low, and I say fertility rate because the fertility rate is the average number of um, children a woman has in her life. And if it, if it drops below two, it means you're not having enough children to replace the elderly when the elderly eventually um, pass away. So what you're going to end up in that situation, and this is Britain is almost in this position now as well, is we don't have enough young people to become adults who will then do the jobs and earn the money, create the wealth to support the elderly. And that lies at the kind of the, the center of a, the problem of an aging population. It's having a huge number of people living to be very old, which is fantastic. We all, as, as any nation in the world, wants to have its population living to, to good old ages. But at the same time, that only works if you have enough young people coming through to support those elderly. And when you have an aging population, it means you don't have enough young people. And if I just jump back one graph, we can prove that because we can see in Japan's case, not enough young people in the future and an awful lot of elderly. Okay, so let's just have a quick little look at the lesson that I'm going to be asking you to do. There's a series of tasks. Um, one of those tasks will involve you watching a video from Twig. Uh, to watch that video, when you go into Twig, uh, you first of all, you click on this link, and that should bring up this little dialog box. Instead of entering your details over here, I'd like you to click on this button and then sign in using your school username and password. And that should allow you to then access uh, the video and then there's a few little questions about the video uh, that you need to do and just follow the instructions when you're completed I'd like to hand in this work by the deadline date there uh, the 7th of April um, and that will allow me and Mr Anderson to mark this so good luck and I look forward to seeing your submissions